from Gateway Materials Test Center. My name is Joshua Tucker. I'm the director here at our facility. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about ASTM D7137. This is the test method to understand the compressive properties, the residual compressive properties after an impact event to the fiber reinforced composite. So in this situation we'll subject the specimen to an out of plane impact and then we'll test it in compression to understand how much strength it has lost due to that impact. We'll do some impact analysis and we'll show you how we present those results to the customers. So let's get started. All right, so compression after impact is a property that's very important for many manufacturing, material manufacturing companies. In the aerospace industry and the automotive uh, industry, they need to focus on this sort of property for the materials so that, for instance, in the aerospace industry, industry they worried about, they're worried about bird strikes or um, lightning impacts. So these things are going to obviously cause some surface damage to the material and now we need to know how much strength that material still holds. So this, this uh, test is uh, four fiber reinforced uh, polymers. It's a very simple test specimen. It's four inches by six inches. So the first thing that you would do is you would take your specimen, cut on the water jet, is how we would do it here. We bring it to our impact machine. This is a 9250G Instron uh, drop weight impact test machine. There's no spring load actions, all gravity driven, adding weights to increase energy. Uh, we have variable sizes for our impactor and a 5,000 pound uh, impact tub here. So, uh, once again, after the specimen is uh, cut up on the water jet, we would put it into our fixture here. We would get an idea of what sort of energy we want to impart, on, impart into it. So according to the standard, it's uh, a calculation based on the thickness of the material. Um, we won't get into that, but that right there gives you your energy. You tell the machine to drop you, your uh, drop weight from some height, and that is supposed to impose some energy on your specimen. You evaluate your, dim your damage to your specimen, like the dent depth and the basic geometry of the impact uh, area, what damage you can visually see. Then we would take it over to our test machine and perform the actual compression portion of this test. And just to let you know, instead of doing the impact test, you can do quasi-static indentation in place of impact testing for ASTM V3137 just as a, a way of imparting damage other than through instant impact by, by drop weight. But anyway, we're going to put this specimen in here and we're going to drop this thing and we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so after that drop weight impact test, we would have taken the specimen, this is that specimen, you can't see it from here. We'll show you some photos here in just one second. But we would measure the dent depth with a uh, dial indicator, and then we would just do some general pictorial evidence and some measuring of the general uh, dent um, geometry, width, length, any cracks, things like that. So once we were done measuring that damage, um, damage geometry and damage modes, we would take the specimen and apply strain gauges. Now the standard requires four strain gauges if you want to assess any bending or buckling in the specimen. And I do recommend this because you will get buckling. Setting up the test fixture just right so that it is perfectly aligned can get pretty hairy and difficult. So those strain gauges will help you with that alignment. We're not going to do it here just for general education and instructional purposes, but there would two strain gauges go on the front side in the top left corner, one inch from the top, one inch in from the sides, two there and two there. Now we would just put it into our compression after impact test fixture here and we will show you the tests. So here we go. there you have it, our presentation on uh, compression after impact testing on fiber reinforced polymers. Uh, as discussed, we were going to show you a little bit about how we would present some of these results to the customer. As you can see here, we've got our impact test um, graph. We show in the red line our energy or our supposed energy, and this is all theoretical on this machine. The amount of energy you put in is based on theoretical calculations, MGH and MB squared over 2. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but that right there is what the theoretical number is supposed to be. Our output energy is correct. This right here is what we were shooting for, so we know that we're right. 
The other line is just your load, so that just shows how your load increased and decreased. And as you can see, that this is over a very, very short span of time, 10 milliseconds. So really, really high rate of uh, high frequency of um, data collection there. So we would use this information to provide uh, just you know maximum load and the uh, deflection um, at the center of the impact present that, that information to the customer along with the dent depth that we find post impacts some other de damage characteristic information we would provide. Then we would perform the compression after impact test. We showed you that. This right here is the type of results we would get, the type of graphical results. We would present modulus information and we would present the ultimate stress of the material. We would also say whether or not we experienced any bending or buckling, um, Euler buckling in the in the test uh, just to verify that it was an acceptable test according to the ASTM. So this is the type of results we would get out of this sort of test. This is how we would present it to our customer. If you or your, uh, for anybody you know, might require this sort of testing, please let us know. Our phone number is 336-217-5184.